It's great to be here. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me. I love Sweden. Uh, the only word I know is hey, but it's great. And it's now better than prego in my vocabulary. Um, I am the co-founder of Whipcar, and Whipcar is the neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor car rental service slash marketplace. Um, this is our new homepage, which is being released next week, so you're the first people to see it. It's a bit of a tease because, unfortunately, we are not yet in Malmo, but hopefully sometime soon. Um, and just to explain the concept very quickly, Lauren already walked through it, but again, the rationale for developing our service was there's so much idling capacity for cars. It's the second most valuable asset that most people own after their home, but the home, whether you realize it or not, is something that's used 24 hours a day. If you're not in your home, it's storing your stuff, you're sleeping there, it's, it's being used. The car, on the other hand, is used in the UK on average for 4.6 hours per week. And those statistics are very similar across the Western world. So at its core, what Whipcar does is we put together people with cars who don't drive very often uh, with people who need those cars. So there's nothing wrong with having a car, but you should make more efficient use of it. So the best way to probably learn about all the complex things we do, the concept is simple, but making it work is not that simple. Um, this brief little video should hopefully explain this to you better than I could. Whip car matches up people who need a car with car owners who don't drive every day. The owner sets a price, the driver requests a time, and Whip car takes care of all the hassle, like insurance and payments. So the cars in your area can now work harder for you and your neighbors. Whip car is free to join. Whenever you need one, a car is just a neighbor away. Just tell us where you live to see what you could drive. All our cars are well looked after and available for hours, days, weeks, and even months. Once you've found one you like, send the owner a message to check it's available and place your booking. If your car spends most of its time parked, enter your number plate and postcode to see how much you could earn. Get started by creating your car profile. Simply add a short description and a few nice photos. You get to choose who can drive your car and when it's available with the assurance that all drivers are screened before their first rental. Picking up a whip car is easy. When a booking is accepted, we tell you where to meet to collect the keys. The driver turns up at the agreed time and shows the owner both parts of their driving license and the booking reference. Then you check over the vehicle, marking any existing scuffs on the vehicle condition checklist. Before driving away, just make a note of the fuel level so you can return the car with the same amount. All done, you're now free to set off. Where you go and what you do is up to you. When your trip is over, all that's left to do is leave a quick review. So great drivers get more bookings accepted and great owners make more money. Whipcar.com, rent the car next door. Okay, thank you. So the this is gonna be exciting for me because in order to convey how human behavior is changing, um, we now have so many great case studies of people who have used our service. We launched in April 2010, so we've been up and running for over two years now. And I think contextualizing with real people and their real experiences is probably the way to convey the point best. Um, when Before we launched, people thought, we were crazy. Who would give up their car and rent it out? Why would you do that? What about insurance? What about this? What about that? And that's fine. I mean, those are all rational comments to make anytime you engage in a new user behavior, right? I mean, the first time that I ever had sushi, I was really questioning my sanity. Why would I eat a piece of you know, raw fish? And, and you know, now I love it. Um, and, and that's what engaging with the new user behavior is all about. So let's take a look at... Uh, our first person, uh, this is Dave. Sorry, I can't read. Um, if you can read that, I'll let you read it yourself, but the part that I've highlighted says, I just wanted your advice on what type of car to buy. So in a very short amount of time, we've moved from people who are thinking about, would I put my car on the service, to on a daily basis, we now get requests from people 
in terms of what car they should buy because they're factoring in rental behavior into their purchase price. They now realize that they don't need a car all the time, so they want to buy a sensible car that's fit for purpose. So here is Filippo. He's based in London. He has a Renault Twizy. If you're familiar with this car, it just came out in, I think, April of this year. Whipcar is, as far as I know, the first and only place you can rent this car in the UK. Uh, it's an all-electric vehicle, very kind of eye-catching and weird, as you can see. Um, Filippo is actually a former member of Whipcar. And he got in touch with us a couple of months ago and said, listen, you know, you, you kicked me off the service because my car became too old. So when you have a, an, any kind of new service, obviously you want to mitigate risk and you have various criteria. His uh, car earned him close to a thousand pounds before we had to kick him off. And he said, I'm going to buy a new car. Uh, will you accept this kind of car? His car was so new that we had to wait a few weeks before the licensing authorities updated their records before we could actually uh, load the car in our system because obviously we do various third-party checks before we allow cars on. So this is a great example of someone who, one, has gotten in touch with us to see if there's a certain kind of demand for a car that he would put on the service. And then also it showcases the uh, potential of a marketplace to help people engage with new technologies. Last year in the UK, there were 1.9 million registered vehicles. Out of that, only 1,000 were electric. So there's a real barrier to people wanting to engage with this kind of new technology. Now you can actually rent that car and learn for yourself if it's something that is going to suit your lifestyle before making that kind of a decision. So our next email comes from Jackie last month. What makes of car are popularly sought for hire by my neighbors, et cetera, et cetera. Will I have to check the car for bumps and scratches, et cetera, et cetera. So again, we have two sets of members, owners and drivers. We push a lot of the vetting and uh, uh, I guess work to owners. They're kind of like Avon ladies for, for the service. And they obviously have a vested interest in performing this way because they're able to now monetize their asset. But that behavior is also very different from traditional options where you may have a vehicle that's not checked for 9, 10, 11 times. There could be disputes on whether there was some kind of damage that was done. Was it attribu attributable to you versus someone else? Here we have a system where the human element actually can provide a better service because of that personal touch. So this is Amit. He's based in Manchester. He certainly has a car that's fit for purpose. This A5 in May generated over 1,700 pounds in one month. And guess what? He says, this car already has repeat customers, and I'm sure clients will be equally happy. So we have a system now where one of our members, owners in this case, call the drivers of their car their own clients and their customers, which is pretty exciting. And we've had stories of people coming to us and say, oh, I've actually done a survey of the five or six or six, seven people who use my car regularly, and together we're going to decide to buy this next car because I know they're going to use it. Next email. Ah, OK. Uh, basically, I'm using this income to justify buying a newer, less than seven years old car. And this is Helen. She has a Land Rover, who, you know, environmentally unfriendly. I live in quite a remote community. So she lives in Kent, which is, a, I don't know, probably an hour and a half outside of London where she is. Um, and yet, within her first two months of starting to rent out her car, her car was rented out five times. So there's lots of latent demand and latent supply. People who are wanting, um, you know, basically they're marginalized from current options and this gives them another option. It also, in her mind, helps her justify having that four-wheel drive because it's being used when she's not using it. And then we move to Robin. I would want the income from the car to at least meet the repayment amounts. I will have 3,000 pounds to spend, and my monthly repayments will be around 100 pounds. So this person is doing financial calculations of how they, can, how they can basically afford and own this car. So guess what? Whip car is basically technology that enables your car to become a managed service. 
A car has been historically a product. You could buy a car, you could sell a car. Now this is a third way, which you could rent a car. So you essentially can own a car from as little as zero pounds a month. Because instead of paying 250 pounds a month for your payments, you'll rent it out four or five times. And that's how you're going to essentially finance your car in the future. You could also come to the dealership directly and, and have a group purchase where one of you potentially is the administrator of that car. So there's lots of opportunity here, which is, which is hugely exciting. And who are the crazy people that are actually you know, driving these cars? So this is Diana. She, as much as she lives, loves her little car, which is a G-Wiz, another all-electric vehicle, she often needs another car to support her lifestyle, of course. I mean, you can't really fit much in that G-Wiz. So she, again, now gets a, a car that's fit for purpose. She can maybe drive Helen's Land Rover um, when she needs that. Megan is someone who says uh, it's difficult for her getting her on train via the train sometimes, and she recognizes that this is a trust-based system. So if you look at her full profile on the system, um, it's very in-depth, and she encourages you to message her and build up rapport um, so you know that you're lending your car out to someone who is uh, you know, a sane and a nice person. And then here's Greg, who used to be a whip car owner. He had a child, and his life circumstances changed, and he rejoined the service as a driver now. Now, this is uh, another thing I want to walk through with you, and this is the kind of dynamics of uh, marketplaces and peer-to-peer. -peer. Setting up any new business is super difficult because, well, I don't need to tell you why. When you set up a marketplace, it's doubly difficult because now you have two sets of customers to cater to. Peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, triply difficult because you have a marketplace with peers who are essentially amateurs, and it's your task and uh, role to help them become pro-ams, and maybe at some point professionals. But pro-ams, well, we'd settle for that. Now, Whipcar is a hyper-local peer-to-peer marketplace, which means that you're, again, building these linkages with people directly in your community, in your neighborhood. And the trust and reputation dynamics around that kind of behavior are very different because of that added hyper-local element. You not only have a recurring relationship with the service, but again, you have that recurring relationship with your five or six clients, for example, or the five or six cars that you use on a regular basis. So moving on to trust, uh, you might not be able to see these two uh, people on the left and right, but they're, uh, they're kind of journalists who have been in the press lately for all the wrong reasons. Um, and this is a really good example of how trust is actually a very fluid concept, but the administering of trust is quite binary, right? You either trust someone or you don't. And you could have years of developing trust, but you're only as trustworthy as your last experience. So if someone thinks that you know, you're lying to them in your book or misquoting something, you know, how would that impact your trust score if such a thing existed? There are lots of you know, fantastic organizations right now trying to solve these challenges. And internally, people like Skillshare and myself and Whipcar and you know, my co-founder and other people in the space are trying to tackle this problem. But it's not an easy one. Um, and a lot of times, the, what we found is the various elements of trust and reputation are very contextually specific to the kind of uh, opportunity you're pursuing. So for us, we, we kind of highlight to people when people are trying to book your car that may live quite far away from you. Because again, this system is at its best when it's recurring neighborhood usage. We allow you to set parameters to say, you know, I only want to accept bookings from people who are 28 years old or, or older, or you know, 25 or over, whatever you might want, because that helps you um, basically feel more comfortable with, with engaging in the behavior. And then now, since we've been around for over two years, we have second and third time customers who say, you know what, I want to port my feedback that I was left on my profile before. I have a new car, but that helped people understand that I'm, I'm a good person. So that, that, that's very important. Where are we now with the whip car? 90% of Londoners uh, are now within a 10 minute walk of a whip car. We launched in a small neighborhood in London. We're now in hundreds of towns and cities. Uh, we have over 19,000 cars, people who are able to rent out their car and make money from it. Um, here are a few demographics that uh, I'll let you, you read by yourself. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you very much for your time.